Welcome to Wildcat Stadium, a gorgeous night in Durham, New Hampshire for America East men's college soccer. The UMBC Retrievers visit the New Hampshire Wildcats. With Pete Webster, I'm Brendan Glasheen. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday night. Well, the Wildcats learned last year you want to get home field for the league tournament. Crucial to win your first match and win your home matches. Yeah, and that's right. And they have a great history against these UMBC Retrievers. Last year, down in Baltimore, the Retrievers took a 1-0 victory. And maybe that kept the Wildcats from having home field in the America East playoffs. But a big game here tonight to open the league slate. A young forward here for UMBC is who we feature tonight. That would be Cesare Marconi, a terrific sophomore forward leading the team with nine points. Yeah, you know, he's not very big. He only goes 5'8", but he's got speed and craftiness. He gives headaches to defenses. And, uh, you know, he's going to give the Wildcats uh, all they can handle tonight on defense. We zone in on the goalie for New Hampshire. Lars Huxall has only allowed one goal in his last three matches. Yeah, you take away a, a goal against Virginia early in the season, and he's put up some great numbers out of Germany. Just uh, like you said, one goal in the last three games. This is a young man who's come in as a graduate student and earned that starting spot and has propelled the Wildcats to this 5-1 early season record. It's the start of America East League play. We come back to Wildcat Stadium in just a moment for starting lineups and opening kick between the Wildcats and Retrievers. That experience in Charlotte was amazing. It really was beyond the expectations of the world. It was um, dazzling. So much so that we all said the next morning, did that really happen? <laughs> so it was, it was a fun experience, a great pride for our students, um, combination of academics and athletics, and quite frankly, I think the best of the American East. The whole brand is about the combination of athletics and academics. Where is he? Sometimes you're ready. Joe, ready? Ready. Sometimes you're not. Ready? Sometimes you can't wait for that moment. And sometimes it sneaks up on you. Ready. But whenever you're ready, or ready as you'll ever be, we're ready as we always are. From the big moments to the small ones and everything in between, we'll handle the financials. Service Credit Union, ready to serve. Welcome back to Durham. Gorgeous night to start the season of fall. UMBC and UNH, first America East match of the 2018 season. Starting lineups for the visiting retrievers. The forwards are Cesare Marconi, Jackson Betcher, and Trey Pulliam. The midfielders, James Gielen, Patrick Zonziel, David Harris, and also Colin Wayant, the defenders, backs tonight, Kyle Saunderson, Trey Vincent, and Jordan Ehart. For the New Hampshire Wildcats, 4-0 and at home this season, by the way. Donette Sackey, Jack Doherty, Linus Falberg, Antonio Calacci, Ziggy Gearson, Jacob Gould, Josh Bauer, Juan Velasquez, Otto Salen, Kyle Brewster, and the man in goal is Lars Huxall. The head coach of the UMBC Retrievers is Pete Carnegie, 450 plus career wins, 28th season as head coach at UMBC. And for the Wildcats, the Durham native himself, Mark Hubbard, his fourth year with the Wildcats. He had the top coaching staff in 2017 in America East, the first honor for the program since 2009. Once again, Brendan Glasheen with Pete Webster, a gorgeous night to start the season of fall. Temperature just a smidge below 60 degrees, a slight wind behind us, and partly cloudy. The sun set about 20 minutes ago, and we are underway. Opening kick controlled by the Wildcats. Oh, we'll see what kind of pressure UMBC comes out away uh, um, here uh, on the road at Wildcat Stadium. Looks like they're gonna take soft pressure against the Wildcat defense and let the fullbacks uh, bang the ball around a little bit here. Josh Bauer had the first touch for UNH. He wears number five, the America East Defensive Player of the Week, his first career honor. Sophomore from Bedford, New Hampshire. Both teams tangle with it along the sideline. There's Josh Bauer again. To midfield, Jacob Gould. 
Salen punched at it for the Wildcats. And an aggressive move by James Geelan. 22 in the black. UNBC overall record of 4, 2, and 1. Finishing fifth in the conference last year. University of New Hampshire at 5, 1, and 1. Finishing third in the conference in 2017. Picked to finish second behind UMass Lowell in the 2018 preseason poll. Lowell in action right now, by the way, against Vermont. We will keep you up to date on that one. Hartford and Binghamton. Also a 7 o'clock start on the ESPN family of networks in America East. Towed at through the middle, then jabbed out of the box. Brewster puts his foot on it. And we have a free kick on the way for the Retrievers. Yeah, a little too much uh, upper body tug by Kyle Brewster. Junior out of New Hampton, New Hampshire. Tugging on Jesari a little bit. Jesari, everybody's going to know about him. Number 32 out there for the Retrievers. He's the one that's uh, put the ball in the back of the net three times this year. He's going to be crafty, and he's uh, just watching him here in the early going. He's uh, not afraid to attack anybody, anywhere try to cause havoc and create a turnover. Nine points in seven matches this season. His nine points are good for third in America East. He had a team high 10 shots on Wednesday night. UMBC kicked to a draw against Howard College. Final was 2-2. UMBC had a 2-0 lead in that contest on Wednesday. UNH last competed a weekend ago against Dartmouth in Hanover. That was a 0-0 draw. Yeah, it's interesting those two teams. So these two teams coming in with their last opponents, probably natural rivals here in New Hampshire. Uh, UNH playing Dartmouth, always a great game. We remember the playoff game last year up there in Hanover. Spectacular shootout win for the Wildcats. And, UMBC there, our brethren's right around the Washington, D.C. area, Howard University. Uh, that, would, that was a game that you know uh, UMBC wanted to put away, leading 2-0. O'Loughlin hops on it. He wears the red penny tonight. A sophomore from Birkenhead, England. Second in the conference in saves per game at 3.83. Blasted to midfield. Both teams are playing with it in the middle third. And a whistle from the official wearing the bright blue long sleeve. Kick up coming for UNH. You know, we can't go without talking about the international flavor of these two squads. Big time. Yeah, UMBC comes in with, uh, uh, what do they have, uh, eight players uh, that are on the uh, from uh, different countries than uh, the United States, ranging from Canada uh, to uh, Beirut, Lebanon. And the Wildcats have a tremendous international flavor, too. Uh, all over Europe, uh, their uh, lineup is dotted by players from in, uh, even Africa, too. You have a player uh, starting out there, Juan Velasquez from, uh, or uh, uh, Donet Saki from uh, Liberia. He just took the shot for New Hampshire on the goal, but brought in by O'Loughlin. Yeah, Norway, Iceland, Sweden, all representatives. Germany with Huxall in between the posts for U UNH in the goal. You know, and anybody who loves European soccer, the Champions League got underway this week. Yep. Who's your team to watch? Well, yeah, I, everybody who knows me knows my favorite team is Bayern Munich. The Reds from Bavaria. Um, <laughs> I watched them this morning, or this afternoon, actually, a 12-30 game this afternoon. Took a 2-0 win, two win over Schalke. I've been to Munich. Such a wonderful city. Oh, incredible. I'd like to go this time of year because <laughs> probably the biggest party in the world is uh, starting up soon. That being Oktoberfest. 
Fallberg on the cross, he hits Valencia. Sackey's got a room to breathe. Sackey toes it off the post, but the rebound by Doherty. one nothing, New Hampshire. Uh, that was just a tremendous run and read by Donut Sackey, who uh, stayed on side and watched this little pass, and you gotta credit the pass as well, uh, isolating that fullback, number 15. And uh, unfortunate for Sackey, didn't put it in the back of the net, hit the post and came right out to Jack Doherty. And the junior from Meriden, New Hampshire, gives the Wildcats a one nothing lead. Great combination play. Number 12 to number 13 to number 14, and the Cats lead one nothing. Right in order. Juan Velasquez getting it started, number 12 for UNH, a senior from San Francisco. Sackey's missed off the post, rebounded by Jack Doherty. He had three goals last season. He picked up his first goal of 2018, the junior local product. His first game and the season from Sackey at 549. Meriden, New Hampshire, Jack Doherty. He's been the man in the middle of everything it seems on offense him and Danette Sackey both of them were very aggressive in the Dartmouth game last weekend couldn't come through with anything so for New Hampshire to score in the first seven minutes Pete it's a good sign yeah that's a fabulous sign you always like to get a an early goal and it gives you some confidence uh, you just got to be careful that it's not too early that you start sitting back a little bit too early Wildcats need to put uh, keep putting the pressure on and uh, if uh, attacked the uh, final third against UMBC again and won a free kick. Yep. Darty weaves out of trouble and boots to Velasquez, who did set up Saki beautifully on that initial shot. Scrum in the corner and the Flag tossed up high by the official. Tonight's crew for this America East men's soccer match. Casillo Ribeiro is the head referee. Assistant referee is Ron Libby. And Hiller Perio also on hand for tonight's. On that goal by the Wildcats, they did isolate Trey Vinson, the yeah, fullback out of Manassas, Virginia. And uh, it was uh, Saki who kind of timed it perfectly to slide by him on the through pass. You know, for a second, it felt as if uh, Saki was going to run out of room and even yeah. get a shot off. Yeah. And somehow he toes it off the post. Got to remember that goal was very large down there, even though it looked like they were the goalie was coming out and the two retrievers were there as well in the goal mouth. The start of league play off to a good uh, good sign for the University of New Hampshire. In the 39th minute, Jack Doherty puts home his first goal of 2018 off the miss from Danette Sackey. I think the America East is going to wonder, Danette Sackey, that name does not come to mind. He is a junior from Liberia, as Pete mentioned. He was not on the team last year. He played with Seacoast United Phantoms of the United Soccer League, the premier development league of the USL. A couple of years ago, he was at Utah Valley. He scored three goals over two seasons as a freshman and a sophomore, and he was out. Doherty up the field again, but towed at the last second by O'Laughlin. No chance for a second goal out of Doherty. But Danette Sackey has clearly made an impact for a Wildcats team that made a huge run in the NCAA tournament last year. He might take the league by storm at forward. Well, you can't be surprised nowadays the way Mark Harbert is recruiting, getting graduate students, transfer students. You know, he lost a lot off that team last year because he had a lot of those types of players. He's just kind of reloaded this year. You know, a little help from those NCAA transfer rules. Uh, uh, getting rewritten a little bit and uh, the NCAA being a little more generous with the players being able to move schools after they get their degree, which I think is a good thing. Just I, this I, summer, I really do. yeah. Uh, you know, you watch coaches change school to school all the time. You know, I, a lot of kids go to a school because they, they the coaches, uh, they, 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 they meld with the coaches so well. And then you never know, the coach is going to go off to uh, 
to another school somewhere. So there's a little more freedom now for players once they get that degree to actually change schools and play their final year of eligibility. And you're absolutely right. Coach Hubbard would attest to what you're talking about. Saki with it, trying to dribble through the box. He and a retriever go down. Right in grasp of O'Laughlin. Good showing of Wildcats fans down below here at Wildcat Stadium. Yeah, that was uh, that was Saki going on one-on-one uh, -on -one with Trey Vincent. That was the player who got burned on the other side for that UNH goal. And Vincent said, no, not this time. You're not going to beat me one-on-one -on -one this time. And took him down, but the referee was having nothing of it. There is one final score to report on the opening night of America East men's soccer. UMass Lowell ranked number 19 in the country, blanking Vermont 2 nothing. The Riverhawks surging early on in the season, just as they did last year. It felt like Lowell and UNH were back and forth in the America East standings. Those two get together again, as you would imagine, on October 26th here in Durham. So Lowell is 1-0 in the league, and Vermont is 0-1. Well, I always thought it was a good move when UMass Lowell decided to upgrade their, their sports other than hockey that was already at the D1 level. They were playing Division II. They'd play the likes of Southern New Hampshire or New Hampshire College, where Mark Hubbard came from. Uh, the coaching ranks. Um, I used to go down and watch U UMass Lowell play uh, New Hampshire College uh, back in the day, many, many years ago. It was an easy take down there. Uh, it's great to see them jump up to the D1 level and have some excellent success, some good recruiting, get some good players in there. And, you know, in that area, Massachusetts, they play pretty darn good high school soccer around there as well, too. So, good place you can actually recruit uh, a, you know, for a school like UMass Lowell. They are competing with the likes of Boston College, Holy Cross, UMass. Terrific program down in Lowell. Mark Hubbard's got a pretty good thing going here in Durham. You're number four. Lars Huxall is in the green jersey tonight in goal, number one. Huxall, a grad transfer, just as Andrew Pesci was a year ago. Pesci coming from Southern New Hampshire, Mark Hubbard's old stopping grounds as a head coach. Saki boxes out his defender. That's Saunderson, number five for the Retrievers. Belted up to Gould. Brewster swings on the cross. I really like the possession time the Wildcats have had. A lot of confidence coming out of their own end and uh, up through the middle third of the field. Just seems that uh, UMBC is sitting back just a little bit. And maybe that's their ploy here to start the game and turn up the pressure uh, a little bit later on or at some minute mark. But so far, the possession is all Wildcats. Salen looked to deliver on the left side of the box, then lost the handle. Otto Salen, another transfer on this New Hampshire roster from Dean College. First season as a Wildcat in 2017, he made the America East first team. Here comes our first corner kick. New Hampshire had six of these last week against Dartmouth. Big opening for Brewster, but jabbed back by the defense. Salem lets it fall, sails back the other way. How about that being the Cats' 41st corner kick of the season? It's only the seventh game. You know, that's averaging five a game, more than five a game. You know, you look at the America East teams, stats-wise, all, I think five of the seven teams, or five of six, rather, are above 40 corners. Both New Hampshire and UMBC had 40 corners apiece coming in. Now that means you're doing something right on the attack. You're getting it down into that area. Watch, we watch a little tackle right here. He just 
cringe when you see two players go down like that. And, and it was the uh, retrievers, James uh, Gillen, coming up gimpy a little bit. Yeah, we're going to have a Wildcat free kick. It's Josh Bauer. Josh Bauer, a local kid out of Bedford, New Hampshire, played for the Global Premier Soccer Club, and uh, they have ties actually to Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich comes over with coaches for the GPS uh, teams. Uh, they do it in Maine, up in the Portland area. And I get uh, some kids walking around my school with Bayern Munich uh, warm-up jackets. Makes you proud. Makes me proud, yeah. <laughs> goes with the flag in my classroom, you know? Your teaching goes beyond <laughs> just the... Social studies and, and math. Oh, you're a math uh, teacher. Just, just math. That's yeah. just math. Yeah. <laughs> Ball falls in Salen's lap, and he boosts it over midfield. Now I do have to say, Lars Huxtall, he, you know, he's from Germany, but he's from Hamburg. That is way up in the north, and they are prime enemies of Bayern Munich. So I don't know how I'd go with a conversation with Lars, but... Uh, I'm sure he has uh, aspirations, perhaps, if he ever could uh, one day to play in the Bundesliga or the Zwei Bundesliga and make a living out of playing football in his home country. It is crazy over there watching football games and going to them. They're, it's just, it's amazing. He's played plenty of games over there. 20 games last year with Norderstedt, 1,800 minutes. Nice get by Mark Hubbard. A little mix up there. The uh, retriever player jumped in and he kicks the ball away. Now that's the part of uh, the game I don't like, that delay thing that did absolutely nothing, just kicking it away. The referee wanted uh, UNH to take the free kick over there. It's the left of your screen. All right, let's get rid of that and let's play on. Entry to Velasquez. Pete said this a moment ago. New Hampshire is really controlling possession and controlling tempo in this first half. We are about 17 minutes in. Not many high quality possessions for the Retrievers. Now, and that uh, moving it side to side uh, in the back that the, the Wildcats just did. That, Gets players like Jackson Becker, uh, he's a freshman uh, forward, just running around, a lot of energy side to side, chasing the ball. Betcher from Hummelstown, Pennsylvania. First two weeks of the season, he won America East Rookie of the Week. UMBC graduated plenty of seniors from a team that won seven games out of a total 18 last year. UMBC looking for its first trip to the NCAA tournament since 2014. They went on a three year run from 2012 through 2014 to go to the dance. Yeah, they've, uh, they've seen a lot of success. When you have a coach that's uh, been there 28 years with all the success that uh, the head coach has had, but, uh, you just know that they're, they're gonna they're going to make it far in these uh, playoffs uh, come November. In fact, since uh, 2009, Pete Karinji Jr., 86, 38, and 25 is the Retrievers' record. That's, that's impressive. He is a UMBC grad, Coach Carnegie. 1978 grad of UMBC. And he was part of the program's first NCAA tournament. 1978, technically 77 in the fall, graduated in the spring of 78. Here's David Harris for the Retrievers. He's a senior from Hawaii. 15 in the black, tosses in. UNHD at the midfield all over him. one nothing Wildcats, thanks to the toe of Jack Doherty. Rebounding Danette Sackey's miss off the right post. 
It's back in the 29th, uh, pardon. Seventh minute. In the box and then whistled away by Ziggy Gearson. To the sideline, not much room to breathe now. And a player goes down for the Retrievers. Yeah, there's your assist man, uh, Danette Zaki. He's the one that had the rough tackle on the Retriever player right in front of uh, <laughs> of the Wildcats bench. Watch this, uh, try to get around him, but the uh, good protection of the ball by Colin Wayant. I don't want uh, Saki to pick up a yellow card, but uh, that's one of those where uh, thank you referee for just talking to the young man. On the free kick, collected by Doherty. Zooms across midfield, making a move, and he goes down. And Doherty got the call from uh, Mr. Referee. Doherty trying to use his speed, just uh, pushing the ball by the defender and try to get his shoulder, but uh, couldn't get his shoulder around the defense. Uh, and a uh, little takedown there. I think it was Jordan Ehart. And the Wildcats will have a free kick. See if they uh, elect to put this in the box. Down at the other end, I uh, like the way the Wildcats have really propelled, uh, repelled the attacks of UMBC from whatever point they're doing, whether it's the left wing, the right wing, the center, free kicks. Wildcats really have not allowed any penetration for the receivers, uh, retrievers to get the ball in on uh, Huxall. Miscommunication. Salen booted. Saki wanted the whistle. I, is he? Yeah, the referee is calling, a, he's just calling a goal kick. At the angle, it seemed like he was uh, pointing at, uh, <laughs> at the uh, penalty stripe. Goal kick for Kieran O'Loughlin. He made six saves last game on Wednesday of this past week against Howard. He had two big saves in the second half, as we told you. The Retrievers had a 2-0 lead. Collapse in the second half. 2-2 draw against Howard on Wednesday. Some reserves just checked in for the Wildcats. Valencia being one of them, Alex Valencia. Senior from Tracy, California, midfielder. Nice look up the sideline of Salen. On the throw in, Saki. Off the shin guards and sent the other way on the cross by Doherty. It'll also be interesting to see how the uh, the, the coaches uh, use their sub rotation, especially with the Wildcats picking up the early lead. Will the Retrievers elect to keep, especially their two forwards, out a little bit longer than maybe they would in the first half? Always to, good to get that little extra rest that you can uh, with your forwards. They're going to do, it looks like the retriever forwards are going to do an awful lot of running tonight. Jordan Dove also checked in for UMBC for forward Jackson Betcher, the player that went down on the sideline a few minutes ago. Dove's a forward, junior from Gambrels, Maryland. Jack Doherty's rebound goal is the difference in this first half. 21 minutes to go. Antonio Calacci backpedaling on D, 23 in the white. He's been terrific for the Wildcats early on. 
leads the team in points with eight. Seven games into the season. And off the ricochet, Vincent getting stopped by Otto Salen, who patrols that lower third, also the sideline up the near end. That does result in a retriever corner uh, kick, but uh, Salen uh, no, no, getting in the way of the cross, so Wildcats don't have to defend something going right into the mixer. First corner for UMBC. Loose in front, now out of the box. Collected by Gielen. Velasquez toes it up to Saki. And he's tripped up again. He goes down to the ground. And there you see Trey Vinson trying to play it off. 15 in black for UMBC. Yeah, again, that, uh, off that corner kick, the Wildcats defended it nicely. Uh, UMBC really uh, only got one touch of the ball, and that was after a couple of touches by the Cats and a harmless situation there. Salen dancing. And Saunderson had enough. He nips at it. Well, you see a player come at you doing four or five little step overs like that. You got to expect the defense is going to make a little bit of physical contact. I try to teach my players, too, if they're trying to show you up with some fancy footwork, make some contact, make them feel it. Put a little boot on the, uh, on the shin pad. Now a double team haunted him as Jordan Dove got involved. That recent substitution for UMBC. Neither of these teams in the latest United Soccer coaches poll, except UNH is receiving votes. 23, or pardon, 26, as opposed to last week's 13 votes. UMass Lowell, who picked up a win earlier this afternoon against Vermont, is 19 in this week's polls. Riverhawks 1-0 in the league. The University of Vermont with the loss. 2-0 win for the Riverhawks of Lowell. Both of these teams trying to start 1-0 in the league as well. A big opening and a save by O'Laughlin. Wow. Plenty of room for Doherty, but he is stopped by the sophomore. Wow, Doherty looking for the deuce. But what a big save, what power behind this shot. Laughlin had the arms up, made the, made the you know, look like a wrist save. Second corner for the Wildcats. Missiles in, and on the head attempt, Laughlin sharp. Yeah, the goalkeeper read that nicely and just kind of shuffled over to get a little closer to uh, what turned out to be the near post off the header. Two great chances for New Hampshire. Kieran O'Laughlin, a sophomore from England with two key saves. Dumped in by Linus Fallberg, number 10 in white. Kalachi spins it back upfield to Doherty. Saki chasing after as the defense of Vincent takes off and the retrievers slip up. Saki's got some room, he's next to Doherty. Doherty toes. Looked like another good opportunity for Doherty. Got a blast, but defended well. O'Loughlin was uh, was in good position, but Doherty, uh, boy, he's uh, he's had the golden opportunities so far here in this game, putting one home and one good shot on net, and then that uh, that one right there that was blocked by the defense. And I was trying to think of, uh, you know, O'Loughlin's uh, 
hometown of Birkenhead. I felt like I've been there. And uh, <laughs> sure enough, I check it out, and it's uh, it's right next to uh, it's right across the Mersey River from Liverpool. So he must be happy that his uh, his red and white club there of uh, Liverpool did well today as well. Kalachi with the cross winds up in the middle. And then uh, spun back there by Brewster. Retrievers back upfield, left to right. It's been mostly UNH as far as tempo in this first half, almost 30 minutes deep. And now you really have to protect it in the final third of the first half. UNBC will be looking for that one golden opportunity to try to get even before the break. Still zero shots for the Retrievers, zero shots on goal. Gearson winds up with it, missiles it over midfield. And on the pass attempt, Doherty was looking for Saki up the sideline and towards the box. Four shots total for UNH. Two of them on goal. And one has counted, Jack Doherty. With his first of the season, a junior. A correction, seven shots for UNH. Four of them on goal. One has cashed in. Foul here on the Wildcats. The retriever will get it right at about midfield. <laughs> Plus five yards on the roll. All right. Yeah, good clear by the Wildcat defense there is. Uh, Hawksaw wasn't able to corral the whole thing, got a, got a mid on it. Off the head, diving a save by Hawksaw. Yeah, it was uh, called offside. The linesman down here, I thought it was, right on the header. He was uh, sneaking a little bit behind. Uh, there it is right there. And on the left of the screen, you might be able to see the linesman with his flag up. Perhaps UMBC getting uh, getting things a little bit closer to Huxall in the Wildcat cage. That's his first save of the night. Yeah, the Wildcat defense has UNH. been. Uh, very stout this Chang. year. Chang. They've only given up uh, 22, 20 shots on net. It's been five goals against Huxall. But he's only been forced to see the ball come at him 20 times. Now in seven games. Or rather close to six and a half games. Now they've protected well in front of them. Yeah, they certainly have. And I can see why. I just... I really like the uh, the level of skill in the back four, and uh, you know, there's nothing really massively creative about it, but it's just it's just you know down home cooking. It's it's how you're supposed to play defense: solid, confident, quick passes. Use every man. Use all your angles. Huxall with just five goals allowed this season, good for a .7. Goals against average. Only 15 saves needed to get five wins out of seven matches early in 2018. He is a grad student. He's only allowed one goal over the last three matches. He keeps this up. Another half for Lars Huxall. That would be six in which he's only given up one goal. Seven, rather, including tonight. A little foul there on the Wildcats. <coughs> ben Dow. Trevers will get another free kick. They'll try to bend this towards the edge of the box again. This time going from the left to the right. 
Just a trickling pass. Dow comes up with it, spears it. Saki missiles it out. And here come the Wildcats upfield. A little heavy touch by uh, the substitute, Conrad Chang. Looked like he was going to be able to beat the defender there, but just a little, little too many yards on that touch. Chang does deliver that burst of energy off the pine for New Hampshire. Off the pine, out of the pines. It's from Oslo, Norway. <laughs> well played. I'm sure that's beautiful up there, too. Ten minutes to go in the first half in Durham, New Hampshire. The start of America East play in men's soccer. UMass Lowell has already picked up a win, defeating Vermont 2 0. New Hampshire and UMBC, of course, you're watching. Also on the ESPN family of networks this evening, Binghamton and Hartford for the start of league play. Here comes the throw in by David Harris. Header by New Hampshire. Vincent floats it back towards Harris. Valencia to Brewster. Bangs into Vincent. Official says it's going the other way. Saki angling on his defense. Pushed up to Gums. Nick Gums, 14. And on the sneaky pass up the sideline, Valencia skips through his defender. And on the pass to Saki. That got some oohs and ahs out of the Wildcats fans. Yeah, I got some oohs and ahs out of me, too. That was a nice little rollover with the studs on the top of the ball. You know, that's, uh, that's so hard to teach. That's just instinct and uh, a lot of experience and, and daring to do that in that situation because if the turnover is created, there's possibly a shot on net going the other way, but just a great craftiness by Valencia. Pushed all the way into the corner. Velasquez for UNH. He's on top of the midfielder, Geelin. Geelin falls again. Brewster nabs it from him. Seven and a half minutes to play in the first. UNH scored six minutes in thanks to a putback finish by Jack Doherty. His first of the season. Kalachi to Bauer. Dumped back out on the pass. Uh, Wildcats themselves looking for that point of attack that they can exploit. Those four defensemen that are playing a flat back four for uh, UMBC. Just like they scored in that first goal, it, you want to isolate if you can, isolate that one defender and either get him leaking off uh, a UNH player for a through ball or, or isolate him for a 2v1. On the cut through, UMBC rips it away. Cross back to midfield. Arconi, our man to watch tonight, the sophomore. No shots for UMBC. We said earlier just the first action for Lars Huxall on a header. He just made a simple save, but his first real action. Kalachi streams in and zips it up to Saki. 
Yeah, we haven't hardly mentioned Marconi's name. Uh, you know, players like the Wildcats, Kyle Brewster, like he just made a little uh, little loose on the touch, the first touch by Marconi, and there's the defense right there, and not allowing a high-scoring player to make a play. Marconi had 10 shots last game against Howard on Wednesday. I don't think he's touched the ball 10 times tonight. Still zero shots for the Retrievers. Seven for New Hampshire, four on the goal for the Wildcats. And another offside there on the Retrievers. Jordan Dove, the junior substitute, just a little ahead of the play. The Wildcats playing a pretty good solid high line. The higher you play that line, the less chance there is for a through ball. Kalachi rips it wide and over the crossbar. And when I say that, there's you know, less chance for a through ball. You have more of a chance for an offside situation. If the forwards play it well and play right even with that defensive line, yes, through balls can be very dangerous and very, I don't want to say easy, but uh, they, they can be had. Nice angle by Doherty, rather Kalachi. He is bulldozed down. That's uh, Johnny Wolf, actually, 22, redshirt freshman from Hopkinton, Mass. And he tried to use his speed going down there and ended up uh, falling over the defense, but I thought there might be a, a foul on the Wildcats, but not called. And the Wildcats have another corner kick. Third corner of the night. This is Valencia with the left foot. Curls, Ooh. and a terrific stop by O'Laughlin. Yeah, he read that well. He was out about four yards when the kick was taken. Risky. It certainly can be. You have to have the confidence. You're going to make that, <laughs> that stop and grab it. He bobbled it a little bit. And the intensity thickens out on the field, a little shoving. Official breaks it up, 3.20 left. Yeah, you think these two teams know about their history uh, sure. uh, going through the years? Uh, you know, you only play each other one time a year, and uh, this, the home sites alternate. Last year down at UMBC, the re Retrievers got the one nothing win. Wildcats were number 12 in the country yeah. at the yeah. time. Yeah. This is the 20th meeting all time between the Retrievers and Wildcats. And on the header, it just fell wide of the post to the right. Yeah, that was a defensive header, too, so it will be a UNH corner kick. Number four. Yeah. They racked up six last game. It is Valencia again. This one towards Bauer, and then retraced by Brendan Garland. A yeah, dangerous ball put in the box by Kyle Brewster. And you see uh, the Retrievers having all kinds of problems trying to collect it and uh, move, the, move the ball out of the zone, out of, the, out of their area. Pass zips through the middle. And Valencia runs out of room. And with under two minutes left in the half, though, the Wildcats would do themselves great if they could poke another one home. You just sense UMBC wants the locker room right now. Yeah. No question. Johnny Wolf to throw it in. Wow. It's a beauty. Bauer goes upstairs for it. The goalie is out, kicked out by the defender, and then whistled back by Kalachi. Another one that zooms over, and uh, O'Laughlin is not pleased. Yeah, he, uh, he wants a foul there. He went up for it. He was challenged. And now yeah, the sophomore from the Mersey side of England. He threw his arms up, almost <laughs> oh, yeah. forgot to get back in the middle. Yeah. He has a goal kick up coming. As we approach a minute to go in the first half. 1-0 UNH. One minute remaining in the first half. One minute. 
while we promote sportsmanship, nice to see the intensity pick up a little bit. That should carry over into the second 45 minutes. Yeah, you like to be intense, you like to be physical. You also don't like to get rattled by the other team's physicality and intensity. And the Wildcats have not gotten rattled by anything here tonight. thinking that you, you, know, you mentioned UNH was uh, when they played last year number 12 in the country at that time in the second half we can talk a little bit more about number 12 in the country in Division One soccer obviously the high point of the Wildcats history being ranked that high with some of those programs they end up playing Indiana in the playoffs at Indiana number two That's, team in the and, nation and their history is phenomenal national champions and you only yes. fall one nothing in that game. <laughs> yes, if you play them tough. Yeah. Three of the last four years, the America East has had a team advance to the Sweet 16 or beyond in the NCAA tournament. Great representation, a great league that has grown over these years. 18 seconds to work with. Chang dribbling into a double team. 10 seconds, Vincent knocks it upfield. And then just kicked out of bounds by Salen. And that is how the first half comes to a close in Durham, New Hampshire. UMBC gets off zero shots. Zero overall, zero on the goal, zero altogether. And UNH gets a goal in the opening minutes from Junior Jack Doherty on a rebound by Danette Sackey. We'll be back to Wildcat Stadium to break down the first half. Respect is hard work. Respect is dedication. Respect is hard work. Respect is dedication. Respect is earned on the court or on the field. Respect doesn't judge based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Respect is being the first conference to partner with the You Can Play Project. And the first conference in the LGBT Sports Safe Founders Club. Respect the coaches, the players, and the game. Respect similarities. Respect differences. Spread respect. Spread respect. Spread respect. You don't have to visit the University of New Hampshire to see what we do. You can see it in our state's coastline, in our farms and forests, and our towns and cities. This is where you'll see the things we do that touch the lives of people throughout the state. For 150 years, UNH has been proudly protecting our resources, empowering the state's economy. We are more than a campus. We are the University of New Hampshire, the state's flagship research university. There's something happening. It's purposeful. It's inspiring. It's the simple idea that good is more than something you are. It's something you do. Eastern Bank is here, giving 10% of our net income to local charities. Here to do good. To do right. To do more. To help all of us do better. So join us for good. Welcome back to Wildcat Stadium in Durham, New Hampshire, ESPN Men's College Soccer, America East opener for UMBC and UNH. Wildcats lead 1-0 after 45 minutes of action. First half stats presented by UNH Analytics and Data Science. Well, as we told you before the break, zero shots, zero shots on goal for UMBC. And Pete, the Wildcats, were aggressive at the very beginning of the game. And as you mentioned, to close the first half, never let the intensity, those 11 fouls by UMBC, really distract them at all. Yeah, they certainly didn't. They kept their composure, and uh, they pushed things forward on the UMBC half. And, 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 and look at that, nine shots, four on goal, nothing for UMBC. And, and what stat isn't on there is time of possession. It would be huge for the Wildcats. No question, they took advantage early. Jack Doherty with the goal. 
This is the conference opener as we spoke on. UMass Lowell picked up a win 2-0 earlier today against Vermont, so they are repping their top-ranked positioning in the preseason coaches poll. But as you see, Lowell three first-place votes. New Hampshire two first-place votes. Albany three first-place votes. It is loaded at the top. Vermont, UMBC follow in. Stony Brook, Hartford, and Binghamton. This is a league where as we talked about in the open, it is truly up for grabs if you take maybe one or these first two matches. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of round robin wins. Like, you know, UNH may be low, but they'll lose to Albany. Vermont may uh, beat Albany, but lose to UNH. What you have to do is you have to take care of the house in the second tier of the league. UMBC, Stony Brook, Hartford, Binghamton, you have to take care of those games. Wildcats have one of them here tonight. Got to take care of it in the second half. We have highlights on the way from the first half in Durham. The start of fall in Durham, New Hampshire. Men's soccer in America East. UNH and UMBC Wildcats lead the Retrievers 1-0. Brendan Glasheen with Pete Webster. Highlights from those first 45 minutes. Let's start with the goal. Yeah, look at that uh, agility right there. Uh, and the, the, the quick follow-up by the Wildcats, Jack Doherty, that's done at Saki that uh, Got it by the goalkeeper. Look at that little roll over there. Just toes on top of the ball. Valencia. Roll it over by Valencia. <laughs> just sweet. Here's a big blast by Doherty again. And watch the save by O'Loughlin. Look at that. Parrying that away. Giving the Wildcats one of their numerous corner kicks. And here is one of those corner kicks. And Wildcats get a header on it. But good positioning. O'Loughlin elects to put the or stay in uh, in his uh, crease area. It's a bit uh, by UMBC. And here's the long throw and a little bobble by O'Loughlin and Wildcats were not able to get the good paw on the ball. 
Good set of highlights there for the Wildcats in the first half. All Wildcats. 45 more minutes to work with UMBC in New Hampshire. First match in conference play. We'll be back to Durham right after this. Welcome back to Durham, New Hampshire, America East Soccer on ESPN. UMBC and UNH. Retrievers got the best of the Wildcats in 2017. Wildcats look to get revenge here in Durham at home, up 1-0. Let's have a look at goalie Kieran O'Laughlin. A save package coming here. He was crucial down the stretch to keep this a 1-0 game. Yeah, there's a little jump out there. Uh make a play and a bobble in the box, but he corralled it right back. And here's another save off the big blast by Doherty. This is the big one. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that's that 5% that you uh, that, that you got to make. It's a little bump there by Bauer, but uh, there was really nothing there. O'Loughlin really wanted to call in that play, but. And then he had to face a couple of corner kicks yeah. moments later from the Wildcats. They ended up with Four corners to UMBC's one. And as you see there, a big goose egg. Two goose eggs. Shots and shots on goal for UMBC. I think it's pretty obvious. The key for them is to find a way to get time of possession, which is something it is not listed here, but it was pretty evident. Yeah, and I'm wondering if uh, the coaching staff of UMBC is going to you know, change uh, tactically and uh, put a little more high pressure uh, on the Wildcat defense to try to affect some kind of turnover and gain possession in the Wildcats' half of the field. They haven't done that so far this game. Second half begins when we return. New Hampshire and UMBC.
second half action about to get going in Durham, New Hampshire. America East men's soccer. It is a conference opener for the UMBC Retrievers and New Hampshire Wildcats. UNH up 1-0. Brendan Glasheen with Pete Webster. Pete, what are you looking forward to or what are some things you're keying, in, uh, keying on uh, for each of these teams going into the second half? Yeah, I'm really going to gonna take a look, a hard look to see if UMBC pushes up more high pressure. That might loosen things up a little bit more for the Wildcat midfield, and they've been very effective out here tonight in the first half. So that could open things up a little bit more for the Wildcats to do some good counter uh, through the midfield area. So, uh, you know, because every time you make an adjustment, there's an adjustment that can be made against your adjustment. We'll see how that goes. But to UMBC, obviously has to change something here in the second half. They cannot play the same way that they did in the first half. They're just going to walk away with a loss. We'll see if they put any pressure on Lars Huxall, the player we keyed on for the Wildcats, grad student transfer from Hamburg, Germany. No shots on goal, no shots period for the Retrievers in that first 45 minutes. Wildcats will shoot on the right side of Wildcat Stadium. And the Retrievers of UMBC shoot to our left. Great way to start the season of fall here in Durham. A gorgeous night for soccer. The New Hampshire football team enjoying its bye week. So the stadium open this weekend. Team is also not on the road. The Wildcats do play here typically. The women's team rarely plays at Wildcat Stadium. But great to have soccer here. It's a beautiful night and a beautiful setting here for a game. Well, we're glad you joined us. We'd love to have you here because it's so wonderful seeing these games in live, live action. Well, you better believe teams throughout the conference are checking them out. These games matter just a little bit more. UMass Lowell winning its first conference match earlier today against Vermont. A 2-0 win in Lowell. And Binghamton and Hartford are underway. That game started at 7 o'clock as well, East Coast time. Each of the four seasons, this is now year four for the head coach of the Wildcats, Mark Hubbard. You've seen more dedication from the student body and the UNH fans all together. Nice little give and go on the door. And then on the revert, Saki steps in. Flutters out of bounds. The fan appreciation for the soccer program has skyrocketed for sure. Yeah, and you can uh, understand why when you see plays like that, a give and go and give and go. One of those one, two, one, twos uh, down the left side. Very creative for the Wildcats. They just missed the last finishing touch as uh, there was a nice cross laid over there. Wonderful work by the Wildcats in the passing department. O'Loughlin with the boot. Brewster leans on one of the midfielders for UMBC. Centered to Gould. Salen facing the D again as Geelan stepped in for the Retrievers. And Jacob Gould for New Hampshire pushes it ahead. Saki on the chase down, a whistle blows from behind the play. Yeah, I think the players, uh, the referee just let a little uh, play on go, but uh, then he saw there wasn't going to be a real true advantage, and he blew it to bring it on back. And the Wildcats will start again from uh, the back, just over uh, midfield. Velasquez mans the near sideline. The Wildcats shoot on the right. A little tugging of the jersey by UMBC. And pushed out by Velasquez. Officiating crew for this America East match once again Cassio Riverio, Ron Libby, and Hiller Perio. 
Wildcats sandwich UMBC that time. Player with the ball was Marconi, who has had a really hard time getting the ball altogether, as Pete mentioned. Ten shots on Wednesday against Howard. He still has zero. The team has zero in this one. Well, he got sandwiched. It was a club sandwich because there were three <laughs> defenders right there, extra layers. Wildcats know to key on him. and you now that takes a lot of discipline. Uh, Kyle Brewster is one of those uh, players there. Uh, you know, as a back, a midfielder, kind of a defensive midfielder, but he gets into the offense so much. Right now he's out on the flank. Brewster, a starter most of last year with UNH from New Hampton, New Hampshire. Played for the Seacoast United Development Academy team. Yeah, a lot of good college players have come out of that program based over in Epping. Chris Pinkham, a redshirt freshman amongst the forwards. He also attended the academy. One nothing, New Hampshire. We're about five minutes into the second. UNH looks to avenge its loss to UMBC last year down in Baltimore. It was a one nothing final. The Retrievers beat the number 12 Wildcats. But more importantly, on to the 2018 campaign. Each of these teams looking to start one and zero oh in conference play. Well, and you said we were speaking earlier, Wildcats looking maybe to uh, break into the top 20. They've been receiving some votes. 26. Up to 12 last year. Yep. Highest ranking. And trip to the NCAAs. You know, I, you know, I'm so old. I've been around here so long and harken back to, uh, you know, that first NCAA trip back in 94. Mike Noonan was the head coach. Then now the head coach at Clemson. He's had a great run down there for the Tigers. I'm about to ask you a very cliche sports debate question. What's this era of Wildcat soccer like compared to the 93-94 teams? Oh, uh, boy, that, uh, that, that team just had so many great players on it. You had the forwards, Mike Venito. Man, that, 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 that kid, he's now an adult, of course. <laughs> he, could, he could dribble through a phone booth and put the ball in the back of the net, and there was Ryan Leib who went on to play um, uh, major indoor soccer. Tremendous as well. But I think uh, the clubs now that, that I see that Mark Hubbard is developing, uh, all the players are at that level. They have so many outstanding players. Every back out there is talented. They're physical, they're athletic. Um, they're goalkeepers, I can't even remember the goalkeeper from that team, and I should, because uh, uh, we did some broadcasting back then on the radio. Um, but uh, other other guys on the on the team. Aaron Porter was the stud center defenseman. He was out of Claremont, New Hampshire. Uh, just tall and oh, another big Kalachi. for the Wildcats. He's had three chances tonight to really blast one. And you know something that you mentioned the talent that Mark Hubbard has been able to recruit, even. Pete uh, Carnegie for UMBC. It's a testament to the league. Yes. How deep yeah. the league is, yeah. how talented the league is. Now every team is getting high level recruits. Yes. Yeah, the success getting into the NCAs and progressing, that just gets you better recruits. You can stay in their parents' living rooms a little bit longer, you know, when you have uh, an NCAA run on your belt now. Player goes down here for UMBC. This is David Harris, who is holding his ankle, the right ankle. And that year in 94, uh, the Wildcats lost to Brown in a, in a tight game down there in Providence, Rhode Island, as he uh, kind of limps off the field a little bit. And ironically, Mike Noonan left UNH to go coach at Brown <laughs> for many years before uh, now he's in his ninth season down at Clemson. And he's uh, actually brought on uh, Rob Thompson, the other former Wildcat coach, as his director of operations. Well, credit to Harris. He is staying on the field. He is trying to jog on that hobbled ankle. 
Yeah, as any soccer player knows, uh, you know, especially in the second half, you just uh, want to see if uh, you can uh, jog it off, run it off. Maybe it's just a little niggling injury. Well, there's a, there's a shot. Is that the first one by UMBC of the game? Not on goal. But Not on goal, but that was indeed a shot. It's about 30 yards out, but uh, UMBC has to generate some kind of offensive opportunity. And this is Zanziel with the miss, but still something to work off of for UMBC. Had the intentions of going to that near side, maybe upper 90s, but had a reverse bender on it. Sailed across the end line. Patrick Zanziel, senior from Woodbridge, Virginia. Atop the midfield for UMBC. Nine minutes in. And some change as well into half number two. By the way, thanks for going back in time a bit to recap those 93-94 uh, <laughs> teams. Uh, it just shows you how old I am. And, I, and I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention one more player. Uh, David Francisco is on some of those teams and, and on that playoff team. And uh, he actually played for me at Salem High School when I used to coach the varsity down there back in the early 90s. And what a great young man he was at the time. And I haven't seen him in many years, but... Uh, he had a lot of speed and craftiness with the left foot here for the Wildcats. And uh, boy, did head coach Mike Noonan make him work for three years. Here's the setup middle as Kalachi was zipping in. But nice defense by the Retrievers. One last note on that 93-94 team. Mark Hubbard was 12, 13 years <laughs> old. And a Durham native, he was checking out yep. the program at that age. He yep. was around town, coming yep. into town to watch that team play. So he has been a Wildcats fan for a long time, despite his previous ties to Southern New Hampshire. He played at Colgate from 03 to 07, or yep. parted from uh, 99 to 03. He was a UNH assistant coach from 03 to 07. Well, he raised the championship plaque with Oyster River for high school. Here yeah. we know at 80, 98, 99. Coach Hubbard always says, I was lucky enough to get starting, uh, to get started coaching when I was playing professionally. So he had a chance to overlap both of those things. Yeah. And that began a long journey for him to really move to the top quickly as far as getting a D1 job and climb the ranks. His team's doing so in the polls, as we discussed. Last year's Wildcats were ranked as high as number 12 in the nation. Currently unranked, but a win tonight over UMBC to start America East play would certainly help the resume of the Wildcats. Both teams opening America East play this evening. one nothing Wildcats at the moment. Uh, certainly UNH would like to uh, create a little better cushion here, just the one nothing lead. They know full well it only takes one opportunity to get the ball in the back of the net for the Retrievers. So. The UMBC saw it happen to them on Wednesday. A 2-0 lead disintegrated thanks to Howard University's two goals in the second half on its home turf Wednesday. It's Jordan Ehart, freshman, 24 in the Golden Black. Jogging to get it for UMBC. A little bit more possession here in this uh, second half. We've played about uh, 12 minutes. A little more possession by the Retrievers. And now with a deep throw in, they brought their uh, long throw in man. Taris, who was hobbled earlier. Ooh. Strong heave. Collected on the corner. Brewster jabs it. And it tucked off a shin guard, it keeps it in that middle third. Saunderson swings on the cross. Retrievers maintain control. 13 minutes into the second half. And they earn a corner kick with some good play over there on the right wing side. Wildcats deed up nicely on that. Uh, There's a little overlap mm -hmm. run, and Wildcat D switched off on that, but uh, the cross was deflected out of bounds. 
But sense a little bit of uh, extra confidence in the feet of UMBC in this half. They opt not to go to the box. Flutters in this time, Salen rips it out. And clangs Bowers' way. It was the second corner of the night for UMBC. Two New Hampshire's four. The Retrievers got off their first shot of the night moments ago. They had zero through the first 45 minutes. Kalachi with the cross upfield. Fallberg felt something from behind. A, a defender getting involved there as Doherty loops it out. Now the big sweetie goes on a runner about 20 yards right up the heart of the retriever defense. <laughs> it was uh, snipped out a little bit from behind. Big sweetie, I like that. Fallberg, an all-conference first teamer as a freshman a year ago, all rookie team. Free kick up coming. It looks like at least. Now yeah, look for this uh, to be served up into the box. Retrievers, uh, they're holding a line right at the edge of the penalty area, 18 yards out. In the first half, we looked at that, the Wildcats, they were setting their high line about 22 yards out. Some of these long kicks. Salen places it down, it's Kalachi with the kick. On the ricochet. Trying to go to Bauer or Saki. Wildcats had it back momentarily. Saunderson, the reliable fullback, with the push to midfield. Yeah, that play by uh, Jean Gilles, uh, boy, that's going to make his uh, head coach have more gray hairs if he doesn't have enough already. Uh, been 28 years on the sideline for UMBC, just an easy turnover right there in the middle of the field, right, right at the edge of the defensive third. Wildcats can't uh, convert that into something, but. Uh, I love those turnovers. If the other team's going to give them to you, you got to make something of them too at, at some point in time. UMBC had double digit fouls in that first half 11 to New Hampshire's seven. We're a third of the way through half number two. Uh, did we get a booking on that play? The referee was writing something down. I think we might have had a UNH booking. Nice run down the left wing side by the Wildcats. That all stems from controlling the center midfield, winning the 50-50 battles. So there was a yellow card issued on Otto Salem. New Hampshire defender, number yep. three. And you look at the part of the field that, uh, that he got it in, uh, definitely throwing the, uh, the outside back into the forward uh, or into the offensive action uh, up that far. Foul occurred about the 18 yard line. Kalachi with the zip through the middle. Salem with the setup and then intercepted the pass intended for Saki right in front. Oh, and Saki was open too. Just one defender in the way and he made the play. Wildcats seem to be exploiting that uh, the point of attack on the left wing side. It's about their fourth foray down that, down that flank here in the second half. Retrievers throw in. Kalachi with the loop back. Saki gives, Doherty goes, but the ball out of reach. Well, we had a delayed offside. The uh, linesman over here on the near side has his flag up. Now the referee sees it. He's way on the other side. It'll be actually a free kick.
You can see the chemistry as Saki, or pardon, uh, Doherty looking over at Saki. What are you doing? They hold each other to high standards. Well, I don't have the best angle on that. Obviously, the linesman uh, does, but I was looking right at Sack. I thought, geez, hey, he didn't look offside to me. But uh, I think just before the kick was made, he was behind the defense and just stepped right in front of him. Just a split second. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give kudos to the linesman with the flag. Good eyes. Of course, I need glasses up all the way up here and binoculars. <laughs> Tonight's crew, Casillo Ribeiro, Ron Libby, and Hiller Pario for this America East the match. Enter the game, number 15, Alex Valencia. Alex Valencia was a substitution in the middle of the first half. He subs in here in half number two. Yeah, I think that's a good sub. He had himself a good span of time there in that first half. Spun some nice corners off the foot. That left foot of his. Yeah, he was in there about, uh, about half of that first half, about 22, 23 minutes. Valencia takes over for Jacob Gould, sophomore from Exeter, New Hampshire. Gould Valencia from Tracy, California. Gould, one of those few players that did play high school soccer, played down there at Exeter for Jimmy Tufts, who's been there about 41 years, I yeah. believe. And Jimmy Tufts played for the Wildcats back in his undergraduate days, and that was before my time. There you go. <laughs> I know, good friends with Jimmy down there at Exeter. Does a wonderful job, won numerous state championships. And I think Gould was on a, on a couple of those. I'd have to check that, though, but... There was an excellent energy at this stadium last year when UNH was climbing the ranks. I believe they defeated Columbia, and Jacob Gould scored his first collegiate goal. And being a freshman, getting playing time, he's got family in town, probably colleagues, friends from Exeter High School. The place was booming when he scored that goal. It was in overtime. Under 26 minutes left. UNH got a goal in the first six minutes of half number one from Jack Doherty. A ball rang off the post by Danette Saki. It was a beautiful pass that was started by Juan Velasquez. Wildcats look for insurance. Doherty give and go. He gets it back from Saki. And missled out by UMBC's backs. Yeah, that was, that was outstanding. Watch this pass right here. Saki being very unselfish. Sees the one, two. Your tendency as a forward might be able to just cradle that and put it over on your right foot and try to bend it into the far side. But he, he was looking for the one, two, and then the return pass. Stand-up D held for the retrievers. Nice idea. And on the cross by the Retrievers, slides out of bounds. Velasquez to throw in. And once again, the Wildcats get a good opportunity going down that left flank. Touch for Huxall. No saves tonight for the grad student. Here's Doherty with a lot of room to breathe. Fires on. And O'Loughlin with the save. Oh, I think Doherty would want that back. He'd want to do more with that. He had actually Saki over the left wing side available. It's the second time we've seen Doherty with a lot of room to blast yeah. one. He had an opportunity in the first half as well. Yeah, could, could that be the space that's opened up with UMBC has held a higher line. They're actually going to get a sub up front as uh, Becker's, uh, Becker's going to uh, take a seat. Chris Pinkham checks in. Redshirt freshman from Concord. Plays some midi as well as forward. 
Fallberg taking a seat, as Pete mentioned. Interesting call out of fourth year head coach Mark Hubbard. And Pinkham, uh, he, he missed a uh, state championship year uh, as Concord High School. His old stomping grounds won the uh, Division I championship last year for New Hampshire. We saw the same stu uh, substitution, rather, in the first half. Jordan Dove, a forward for UMBC, he checks in for Jackson Betcher. Upcoming matches for the New Hampshire Wildcats. They take a break from league play after tonight, visiting the UMass Minutemen on the 25th of September. That's later next week. And then a trip to Binghamton to continue league play. And then check out Harvard at UNH. That's New Hampshire's next home match. 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. We'll have the broadcast on a Tuesday night here in Durham. Hope it's just as pretty as tonight is. Oh, what a what a night for soccer here at uh, Wildcat Stadium! Great sunset, early goal by the Wildcats. Love to get another one here, double the lead. Can UMBC get the equalizer? They were off to a good start, controlling possession in this second half, but it's been mostly Wildcats here in these last string of minutes. Nice bending move by Velasquez, tracked down by Brewster. Threaded through the middle, and booted out. That yeah, tough ball in by Valencia. Just that left-footed curling there, uh, tough for the defense to play that out. Looked like it was a hip. It actually got uh, got in the way of it by the defenseman. It is 52 degrees here in Durham tonight. Some clouds, but not many. As Pete mentioned, we had a beautiful sunset to our left, our vantage point up in the broadcast booth here at Wildcat Stadium. It was pretty. There's a look, sunsetted at 6.41 Ooh. this evening. Yeah, that time is gonna start going backwards, unfortunately. But hey, we'll appreciate it while we can. Here's a good look for UMBC. And a stop by Huxall. This shot by Wayant. Yeah, first save of the game for Huxall. And this is a dandy right here. Low. Might, might not have squeaked in there. But uh, you, you, as a goaltender, you, or a goalkeeper, you can't take a chance on that. It's an excellent bid by uh, the man jogging off, being replaced right, right now, Colin Wayant. Third corner for the Retrievers. Marconi with the kick to the far post. Intended for Vincent. And he runs out of space. Yeah, I hate to say it, there's only a, an hour and 10 minutes until the, uh, the autumnal equinox. I expect Durham to go crazy after this game. <laughs> <laughs> no burning couches out there, people. <laughs> Well, we used to celebrate that in college. Yeah. Nineteen <laughs> thirty left. Valencia fresh off the bench a moment ago. To the sideline. Velasquez. Sees two defenders coming. It's taken away by Marconi. Puts on a shot, and it rolls wide. Yeah, that'll be another shot, but not a shot on goal. No, Marconi, as we've talked about, he had 10 last game. He is their leader in points, goals, assists. He's leading them in everything. I think he just wanted to shoot that one because he hasn't had any opportunities at all in this game. And I think his coach said something to him because he put his arms out towards the bench. Say, what am I supposed to do? Well, yeah, you are about 35 yards out, and I don't think you're going to be Huxall with uh, a shot from there, but you just have to, you know, when things are going rough for you, you just have to try anything. Try to get the wheels going. 
Oh, well, Wildcats don't, don't, uh, they don't mind that UMBC is spinning their tires in the Alabama mud at all. Two shots for the Retrievers, both in this half. One on goal, as we saw a moment ago. The terrific save by Lars Huxall. A great defensive play right there by Otto Sale. And you know, BC winger wanted to go around him, but uh, he stepped in, got in the way, perfect shield, turn outside. And the Wildcats uh, not allow the Retrievers to uh, get any kind of bid towards the center of the penalty area. Senior back out of Gothenburg, Sweden. First teamer in the conference a year ago. A starter for much of the season and the 20 plus matches New Hampshire competed in with the NCAA tournament. UNH hosted an NCAA tournament game last year for the first time in program history in the team's second ever conference tournament appearance or pardon NCAA tournament appearance. Wins over Fairfield and Dartmouth to get to the Sweet 16. And eventually fall to Indiana, number two team in the country. Doherty to Conrad Chang. Tiptoes left, and then sends it back downstairs to Valencia. Zanziel to throw in. And Jack Doherty uh, carrying the ball and that thrust down the right wing side. He was looking for a pass back from Chang. And Doherty had two assists in that uh, initial playoff game against Fairfield. 3-0 win for the Wildcats in that one. That was a terrific setting. Wildcats went to Hanover to play Dartmouth in the second round. And that ought to, that ought to have felt good to go and play one of your rivals on the road yeah. and win there. Yeah. Makes that ride down I-89 that much sweeter, especially in the playoffs. Yeah, PKs, oh, that was fabulous. They are looking to make another strong run in 2018. They got to get off to a good start in league play. A win would do the trick to go to 6-1-1 one, and one overall. UMBC 4-2-1 overall. Their next game is at home against Vermont a week from tonight. A 7 p.m. kick. Catamounts fell earlier today to Lowell. We are heading into the final third of the second half, 15 minutes. UNH with the lead. Chang with the crisscross, fires on, and O'Loughlin dives to make the stop. Yeah, nice little cutback move with the outside of the right foot by Chang. O'Loughlin made a nice save, left no rebound. Nick Gums with the push up for the Retrievers, 14 in the black. Now Vincent traces it down. UMBC trying to diagram a way to get a good look. They have been hard to come by tonight against this New Hampshire defense. Ziggy Gearson with the left foot. Yeah, I'm just so impressed how, how well the Wildcats' backs read the play. And it's like, they, they, it's like they've, they've been in the, in the chalkboard room of UMBC. They know exactly what they're, they're going to do, where their strengths are, how they're going to attack. Oh, nice move by Gums, but cut off by Velasquez. Yeah, Velasquez had fallen down in the initial move, got right back up. Pick the pocket of the retriever player, and here go the Cats. Kick. 
Gearson with the bluff. Sold out the defense. Got some cheers out of the Wildcats fans. Good crowd here at Wildcat Stadium below us and across the way. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to have a uh, card against uh, UMBC. I think uh, we have the clock stopped. So, yes, we're going to have yellow card caution issued. That's Patrick Zonzeal. And there it is issued. First one of the game issued to UMBC. We'll get confirmation here in just a moment. A foul has been issued, likely against Zanzil. And Wildcats elect to go with possession and bring it all the way back to the keeper instead of trying to uh, get a long cross in the box from about 45 yards out. And they work it down the left wing side, attacking that flank again, and they earn themselves a deep throw in. Danette Saki checks in for the Wildcats for Jack Doherty. And to confirm, that yellow card issued to Patrick Zanziel of UMBC. There's Saki back in. Conrad Chang took his place initially. Now it's Saki and Chang. Kalachi with some nice moves. To bend it in towards Saki. Under 12 now to play. Now jabbed in front. Velasquez steps into a shot, Ooh. and Saki nearly sit in to push it in, but just a second late. I think that probably, if he got a boot on it, it probably would have gone for an offside. As he was just, yeah, it most likely would have been. But uh, hey, lit up the crowd. Got us oohing and aahing up here. Great ball movement there for the Wildcats. And, Again, exploiting that left wing side. Oh, there's another good defensive run by Salen. Well, he's quick. Gets the body position right. I said earlier, the big Swede. He's not really that big. He's only 5'10". You think of Swedes all being big, I guess. I don't know. He certainly is fast and knows how to use the leverage of his body. Huxall getting ready to blast a goal kick. Valencia opts to Brewster. And now it's sent back to the lower third by Velasquez to Huxall. If you're UNH, how do you approach these final 10 minutes or so? Well, you, you would hope uh, that you don't change the kind of uh, mentality that you've had in the whole game. You want to maintain the pressure. You don't want to get back into a shell and think we've got to really protect, protect. Because then UN, UNBC has, has a little bit of experience, but they have the talent that they can make you pay for it. So UNH needs to keep their positioning straight and the pressure they put on the ball straight. Same as they've been doing. And even pulling a little offside there, pulling a little something out of maybe a hockey playbook many, many years ago, a coach I knew. Um, think that the game is five minutes longer than it is. So instead of working hard for the next and looking at nine and a half minutes, think it's 14 and a half minutes. Then when the whistle blows, you're like, oh, we had five more minutes. We didn't get into that shell that a lot of teams get into in that mentality with about five minutes left to play. Interesting. The scoreboard that it was newly implemented a couple of years ago at Wildcat Stadium, it is very big, but the time, luckily for your argument's sake, is not too big. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can watch on the video screen. You watch the game. Uh, the but, broadcast uh, is up there. Yeah. <laughs> 
extra eyeballs. It is beautiful here, beautiful setting. Uh, you know, Wildcat Stadium mainly for football, but it's perfect for soccer. Uh, the architects of it did it right. They made this turf wide enough to have an outstanding soccer pitch on this grass, on this artificial grass. On the cross to the corner, Gums sees it flutter out of bounds. If the Wildcats finish this game tonight, they'll improve to 15, zero and three at Wildcat Stadium over their last 18 games. Yeah, they have protected <laughs> home. Yeah, they certainly have. So you want to talk about the looks of the stadium. Well, the players and the fans have responded. They have made this a tough place to come for opposition. Well, they built it brick by brick. That's what their motto hey, hey. is this year. And you, know, you walk around the stadium, and a lot of brickwork on it. It's absolutely beautiful. The Wildcats have decided they are going to protect it brick by brick, and they certainly have. Got about uh, a little less than eight minutes to uh, continue on and keep protecting it here tonight with a one nothing lead. 13. 13 minutes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you, that's right. <laughs> You know, we're, we're, you know, I said an old hockey coach, uh, the, uh, the the great uh, legendary uh, head coach Charlie Holt, uh, got that advice from a, from an old friend named Fred Jervis. A couple of old names, if anybody associated with UNH hockey, uh, that helped uh, Charlie deal with things like the power play and the end of the game situations. Here's the kick. It soars over Saki's head and sent the other way. Yeah, nice little flick on the on the defense. You got uh, one of your one of your offensive guys back protecting the box again on those dangerous kicks. Deflected out by the Wildcats. It'll be a deep throw. This could be a long one. It is Vincent. Heaves to the box. Wow. Huxall. There it's. He snipes it from the rest of the guys on the field and reels it in. Yeah, watch this from uh, the, the goal cam. Goes right up over his uh, own player and protects the ball. Great hands by Huxall. That type of save by a goalie reminds me of a Hail Mary by a quarterback <laughs> into the end zone. Everyone's just going up to get it. And he just had the best read out of everyone. Nice work by our camera crew. That is our GoPro cam inside the goal. The net cam, rather. Six minutes to go. That's another difference now than uh, in 1994. There weren't cameras all over the place now. You know, with these uh, net cams, you can put them anywhere. They're great. It is Vincent, same spot. Zanziel gets it back to Vincent. Blows by Salem, but he cuts him off. 5.30 to go. Kid's been doing it all game, Salem has. The senior back has been crucial as Gearson plows it to the opposite sideline over the UMBC coolers. Now you look at uh, UMBC now, they're throwing everybody forward. Crunch time. That's good shielding there by the Wildcat defense, and they'll earn a goal kick. Yeah, it's crunch time. There were uh, nine players for UMBC within about 25, 30 yards of the goal. The goaltender's up. He's about 35 yards out of his own net. Johnny Wall. Might see some uh, every little uh, piece of delaying tactic you can use now by the Wildcats that they can get away with. Clock is their friend. That's for sure. And possession of the ball will be their friend, but uh, there will be intense pressure by UMBC. They'll lay it all on the line. On the revert. Wolf ran out of room for a moment, and then Marconi twisted one right into Wolf. He got there, though, to face him up. And another corner kick for the Retrievers. This is Marconi, the sophomore from Italy.
Fourth corner for UMBC. Saki in the right spot. He'll loop it back up towards midfield. And look who's going to play it. <laughs> the keeper at midfield. O'Loughlin sends it back in to the mid-third. Wolf chasing it down. And he'll do the smart thing and let it roll across the track and uh, wait for a new ball to come in and get somebody else to come take the throw. throw for the Wildcats. Another 10 seconds, 15 seconds coming off the clock. Under three. UMBC was shut out at Western Michigan in the middle of the month. The Wildcats tied with Dartmouth last game 0-0. So technically not a shutout win, but their last shutout win was 1-0 against Quinnipiac here at home, Wildcat Stadium, September 7th. Well, Trying to hold on. Offsides on that play by UMBC. Just a little too anxious over the top. Wildcats just uh, reveling in these uh, offsides, and throw ins. Now we have a UNH foul now, a little grabbing of the jersey. The linesman flags, a flag uh, went up and the referee uh, said, we're gonna go with your call. Under two minutes, 140 now to be exact. Yeah, here's the old uh, forward substitute for a fullback UMBC for UMBC. Jackson Betcher, one of their starting forwards, a freshman, back in. This is the first league match for both of these teams. It is crucial to start well in the league. The Wildcats are about a minute now from holding on to go to 1-0. UMBC beat New Hampshire last year at home. The Wildcats were number 12 in the nation. I think it's a fair thing to say they remember that in Baltimore a year ago. Well, it's not only big for uh, for league competition uh, and uh, you know getting back even against UMBC, but uh, the Wildcats only have 16 games in the schedule. They're allowed 18. And I'm not sure what happened with the scheduling, but that just makes even every game even more valuable on a national perspective. Sure. Here we go, last thrust up to the left wing side here for UMBC. That's probably going to do it right there in the deflection out of bounds by Valespas. Five seconds. Four, three, two, Time runs out at Wildcat Stadium in Durham. The UNH Wildcats are 1-0 and oh in America East play in 2018. A 1-0 win over the UMBC Retrievers. The goal came early. Minutes in, Jack Doherty with a goal to put the Wildcats in front, Pete. And from then, they played stout defense, controlled the clock as well. Yeah, they controlled most of the game. Look at those shots, uh, 12 to 2. Two of those for UMBC coming in the second half. They only got one on goal, and it was a fairly harmless one. And uh, corners ended up being even, 4 all for these two teams that... Uh, Really have a lot of uh, corner kicks uh, in their stat column there this year. Great job by the Wildcats, though. They held on here in the second half to get the W. These final stats presented by UNH Analytics and Data Science. Tonight's service credit union, player of the game, Jack Doherty. No surprise here. He had the goal earlier. 
junior from New Hampshire, a local product. He had four shots on goal. He had plenty of looks. It turns out to be the game-winning goal. He had a couple of real open looks uh, in, in the first half and the second half to put the Wildcats up 2 nothing. but he comes through with a huge shot following up Saki. Yeah, he had a lot of great touches, a lot of great runs, had that excellent shot there, uh, forcing O'Loughlin uh, to make a tough save there in the first half. And he got the game winner, great positioning, banged it in as it came off the post real quickly. So UNH improves to 1-0 and in America East play, UMBC to 0 and 1. The Retrievers host Vermont next Saturday night. New Hampshire heads to UMass later this week. For Pete Webster, my name is Brendan Glasheen saying so long from Durham, New Hampshire once again. The final score, the New Hampshire Wildcats won and the UMBC Retrievers nothing. All games are streaming live on the Watch ESPN app. Download a subscription today to ESPN Plus or log in with your cable information to watch ESPN 3. So long from Durham, New Hampshire, the Wildcats defeat the Retrievers in Durham.